Between 1975 and 2008, disasters took the lives of over 2.2 million people, with economic losses totaling over $1.5 trillion. As if the risk of disaster wasn't high enough already, climate change is making matters worse. Throughout the world, the weather is becoming more extreme. Wet seasons are getting wetter, dry seasons drier, hurricanes and other extreme events are becoming more frequent and intense, and waiting in the wings is the new peril of rising sea levels. Meanwhile, booming human numbers mean that more and more of us are living in the firing line of catastrophe. As extreme weather events become ever more frequent, governments are waking up to the need to protect their citizens from the climate. These interviews tell the stories of how people in three very different places are taking action to protect lives and livelihoods in a changing climate. London is pioneering a range of measures to adapt to the increased risk of flooding and heat waves. Colombia is facing the full gamut of impacts, from sea level rise to melting glaciers. The government is focusing on proven, low-tech solutions. The people of Vietnam have coped with extreme weather for thousands of years but climate change looks set to push traditional defences to the limits. Though poles apart, all three face similar challenges. We expect in London we're going to experience uh, an increased frequency and intensity and maybe even duration of floods, droughts and heat waves. Floods are the most significant impact in terms of loss of life and actual physical damage to the city. Um, however, heat waves are the ones we've experienced most frequently in the past decade. Uh, the heat wave of 2003 actually was responsible for the deaths of some 2,000 people in the UK and 600 people in London. There are opportunities. The UK has a large, its largest number of deaths that occur as a result of the climate are because of cold weather. But again, you then run into that other edge of the sword, which uh, says as we get hotter and hotter uh, uh, weather, is, is that there's a greater chance of death during heat waves, such as we've had in 2003 and in, in other very warm years. We have been experiencing trend of strong rainy seasons for the last uh, five to six years. And as a result, we have experienced heavy flooding and um, impact on infrastructure particularly on water supply infrastructure. The extreme events and the risk have increased in our territory. For example, that the level of the main rivers of Colombia, like Magdalena and Cauca, uh, surpass the level, the historical levels you know, of our registers. So causing the strong floods and strong landslides and, and avalanches. Vietnam is a, it's about 1.5% uh, of GDP per year that is affected, uh, lost essentially due to um, disaster, natural disasters or um, meteorologically related events. Um, about 70% of the population is exposed to multiple hazards, um, primarily because such a high percentage of the population live on the coastline. So exposure to heavy rains, exposure to cyclones, the intensity of these and frequency of these events are likely to increase with climate change. Có thể nói là chính phủ Việt Nam thì lúc này rất là quan tâm đến vấn đề biến đổi khí hậu bởi vì Việt Nam là được đánh giá là một trong năm quốc gia bị ảnh hưởng nặng nề bởi sự biến đổi khí hậu đặc biệt là vấn đề nước biển dân. Cho nên là chính phủ Việt Nam đã ra đời cái chương trình mục tiêu quốc gia thì nếu như theo dự báo World Bank thì mực nước biển có thể dâng lên tới 1 mét và nếu dâng lên 1 mét thì có nghĩa rằng là ở đồng bằng sông Cửu Long trên 90% diện tích sẽ bị ngập sâu với thời gian từ 4,5 tháng cho đến 5,5 tháng. Thứ hai là trong mùa khô thì cái diện tích bị nhiễm mặn với nồng độ 4 gam lít sẽ chiếm tới 71%. Có thể nói là cái truyền thống phòng chống lũ bão của người Việt Nam thì có truyền thống từ lâu đời. Trong những cái năm trước đây thì cái chính quyền phong kiến trước đây cũng như là là sau này thời chế độ Pháp thuộc thì 
nhân dân cũng vẫn rất là đặc biệt quan tâm đến công tác phòng chống đến mùa mưa bão thì nhân dân luôn luôn phải chuẩn bị những cây tre những cái bao tải đất để chuẩn bị cho phòng tránh vỡ đê cũng như là úng ngập và đấy nó trở thành một cái truyền thống rất là tốt tuy nhiên thì do thiên tai nó cũng khắc nghiệt cho nên là cái việc vỡ đê là xảy ra rất thường xuyên phi công trình và các giải pháp để xây dựng các cái công trình đối với các cái giải pháp về phi công trình ấy, thì chúng tôi tập trung vào để nâng cao chất lượng các cái dự báo về thiên tai rồi phòng chống và đặc biệt là nâng cao nhận thức cho người dân để phòng chống từ phòng chống thiên tai và đặc biệt là các cái phương châm bốn tại chỗ mà chúng tôi áp dụng rồi bên cạnh đó thì chúng tôi tập trung vào các cái công tác để xây dựng các cái công trình như là xây dựng đê kè rừng phòng hộ ven biển và uh, xây dựng các cái công trình hồ chứa ở đầu nguồn để giảm nhẹ thiên tai đặc biệt là bảo vệ rừng đầu nguồn uh, chúng tôi có bảo vệ rừng đầu nguồn uh, riêng uh, đối với kỳ hạn hán thì uh, những năm gần đây thì vấn đề hạn hán cũng đã được uh, khắc phục một phần do đã có những cái uh, hồ chứa nước được xây dựng ở đầu nguồn cũng như có cái đập thảo long À, ngăn nước mặn ở uh, dưới biển lên. And we're playing our part in the environment agency by running a big project to look at the future of sea level rise and flood risk management in the estuary, which is a very important part of adapting London to uh, a changing future. Uh, if we didn't have the flood walls and the Thames barrier protecting London, then it would have a very low level of flood protection and, and would be flooded fairly frequently. Well, the Thames Barrier, as you can see, is a very large structure and it consists of a number of gates across the river which are normally sitting in the bed of the river. So when we've got a storm surge coming up the river, they all go into the vertical position and stop the, the water going further up into London. There's good news really in that uh, we think the existing system can uh, carry on right through to 2030, but after then we'll need to look at some major improvements to the system, either in terms of major modifications to this barrier or possibly building another one further downstream. If you were to chart London's roadmap to resilience, that is to how we are preparing for the impacts of climate change, I would say that there are three key actions that we are most intensively focusing on. The first is to ensure that we are providing design guidance to architects and engineers that encourages them and enables them to plan for the climate that, they, that the buildings that they are creating will experience over their design life. The second thing we're doing is to actually understand flood risk in much greater detail. So to actually look at who and what lies in the floodplains of London's rivers today and to understand how the extent, depth and frequency of flooding in London is going to change over the future. So we are able to look at each tributary in London and identify the areas where we are going to protect, the areas that we are going to store flood water in and the areas where we accept that we cannot protect but therefore we'll make sure that there is very good local resilience and emergency planning. And the last thing we're looking at is a suite of urban greening. That is to restore green spaces back into the city and processes that mimic green space such as permeable pavements. Because we believe that this will not only help us in the uh, challenges provided by climate change, but make London a much more livable city. We decided that we are not going to undertake very unusual projects or very, or very unusual approaches to face climate change. For example, in our islands in the Caribbean, we know that most models predict that we're going to, to experience a reduction on rainfall. Consequently, water supply is going to suffer. So we are now undertaking a project to, um, to capture all rainfall, so all the, all the community has a system that collects rain from the rooftops and all that water goes to a, a communal water storage and treatment system and then now that water is again recirculated and, and shared amongst the community. So this is a project that we have the technology, the technology is not really new. Second is a project that will have an impact immediately but at the same time we know that this system will help to increase their resilience to climate change.